What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to talk about money and finances and my income and whatnot, but I was like, how can I do it in a cool way that we can understand? And I thought, pizza. Wait, 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 wait. Before we cut this pizza, in order to make sense of this video, it's important how we cut the pizza. First up is Ghost Supplements, which provides me with a monthly salary and a commission percent every time that someone uses my code for a sale. This makes up a whopping 49% of my monthly income at the moment and is my largest sponsor. Next up, we have Movement Watches and Sunglasses, which also provides a commission and salary. This makes up for 24% of my monthly income, being my second largest sponsor. Thirdly, we have our random promotions that we do every now and then. You see me work with a spear company, the scale company, um, meal delivery services. This makes up for 15% of our income, depending on how many times we do them. Next up, we have YouTube, of course, which is not our biggest money maker, but it is the main powerhouse of everything. This makes up for 11%. And finally, we have our new stream, Twitch, which is a pathetic 1%. But we're, tr we're trying. Fortnite is a lot of fun. Now, the problem with this pizza is that it's only one pizza. And you might be like, well, it's split into five sections. You have different streams of revenue. And while that is true, it's all coming in from our social media, right? It's still under one kind of umbrella. And this is the pizza that I'm eating from every single month. So money is coming in, but money is also going out for all the things I do like eat Chipotle, right? I'm taking some of the pizza away. When I go out on the weekends, huh. when I go on dates and girls don't call me back, when I go to the movies, when I buy electric bicycles, my expensive apartment, bags of sour candy, personal travel. As you can see, pizza's coming, pizza's going, but at the end of the month, we still always have pizza left over. So the idea is that you're always making more money than you spend, and that should really be your goal. A lot of people have a specific amount of money they save each month. That's not the case for me. I just always know that I'm still saving more than I'm spending every single month, and that's very, very important for longevity. But you know, we have this one source of pizza, but we have other streams of income. We need a bigger pizza. This will be for delivery. I just need one extra large pepperoni pizza, please. All right, thanks, man. It, 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 was, me in the, it was me in the hallway. Oh my gosh, Max, an extra large pizza. Is this your second stream of revenue? Yes, it is, guys. This pizza represents Ever Ford Apparel. And this is an extra large pizza. It's larger than the last pizza because Ever Ford Apparel makes more money than all of the other pizza things combined, right? So this is the biggest source of revenue that I have. But you might wanna just dive in. You're like, I'm making lots of money, making lots of money. No, you don't do that. The thing with Ever Ford Apparel is that you always reinvest the pizza back into making more and more pizza. So then you can have a double XL, and then you can have a triple XL. Then you could have a quad XL, right? Do you get what I'm saying? I don't use any money from Everford Apparel besides paying specific you know, business expenses. I do not use any of the money from Everford. I don't eat any of the pizza from Everford. I put all of that back in the box and I send it back to Papa John, Papa Maxi, right? So he can make bigger pizzas. Always reinvest back into your business, even though you want to eat the pizza. But we're not gonna eat the pizza. Maybe just like a bite. No. So although pizza is our main source of income, another thing you need to be thinking about is long-term investments, right? And specifically with savings accounts and IRAs, just retirement accounts. You need to think about yourself in the future, right? Because a lot of times it's kind of like eating vegetables. You may not see an immediate return. You may not eat broccoli and you're like, oh my God, I leveled up, right? Um, but you know it's good for you. You know you should do it. I'm sure your parents have talked to you about IRAs. It's like, Billy, invest in your IRA. And they're like, shut up, mom. I don't care about money when I'm 60. I want to party now and pop bottles, mom. I want that money now. I don't want to put it aside in a bank and not touch it. Um, I'm telling you guys, invest in these things as early as possible because they compound interest. Compounding interest is your friend. 
With IRAs, it's an individual retirement account. There's a couple different ones. You have traditional, you have Roth. The one that I use is a SEP because I'm a business owner. You want to maximize these every single year. For example, a Roth, you can contribute up to $11,000 a year, I think. And with a SEP, I can contribute about $55,000 a year. And I maximize these every single year. Now, on top of my IRAs, I also have money in my bank and a savings account that's in a money market that provides a small percent of interest. And the reason these are so important to start now is because compounding interest. Max, what is compounding interest? Dude, I need to know. You've come to the right place, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, oh, awkward in mid filming. Hi, nice Sorry, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, hello there, boys and girls. Chef Max here, and today we are studying Skidonomics. I'm going to teach you about compounding interest and how you can have your money make you more money. You might be like, well, Chef Max, why would banks just want to give me free money? Well, okay, I'm not gonna do the voice the entire time. Guys, the reason banks give you interest is because they are using your money to do other things with their clients, with other loans and whatnot. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to give a big overview. So whatever I say, understand that it's a broad explanation, right? And you're not gonna make this many Skittles back, but let's just say, okay, this is the bank, right? This is your bank. Every year you put two Skittles in your bank account and the bank says that they will give you one Skittle for every two Skittles you put in. Wow, that is a tasty and delicious deal. You should go with that bank, right? So after the first year, you put two Skittles in, you now have three Skittles. You move on to year two, right? You go ahead and put your two Skittles in, but now you're making interest. This is where it's compounding. You're making interest on the other Skittle that you got, right? So now you're making two and a half Skittles, right? Because you're making it off of five Skittles instead of just the first two Skittles, right? So you make, two and a half Skittles, right? Now you're up to seven and a half Skittles, right? The next year you put your two Skittles in, you're at nine and a half Skittles, you're making 4.75 Skittles now because you're making Skittles and all these other Skittles, right? I definitely don't have a sheet. I'm just gonna put this over here, guys, so you can kind of see, you know, you can kind of see. We're just gonna go this a little quicker, right? The idea is that every time that you put Skittles in, right? The next, sk next year you put two Skittles in, now you're making 8.12 Skittles on your interest, right? So now you have 24.37 Skittles. You add your two Skittles for the next year, 26.37 Skittles, but you now you're making 13.18 Skittles on your investment. Look how many gosh darn Skittles. This a bank account is delicious. Now you have 40 Skittles. And now, you know, you put your two other Skittles in. You got 41.5 Skittles. You're now making 20.75 Skittles. Look at all these Skittles. You now have 62.25 Skittles in six years. This is a very big overview, but the idea is that the compounding interest is when the interest adds onto the money you've invested, you're making interest on that. It's compounding, it's building up. So in six years, you invested 12 Skittles, but you made 50.25 Skittles. You made 50 Skittles on only 12 Skittles. Guys, that's why it's so important to start now so this money can invest over time. It can compound over time. And like, you don't think that it's gonna be a lot of money, but I'm telling you, if you invest properly, when you're 60 or something, you can pull out money in the seven figures. Seven figure Skittle deals, guys. Look it up, Roth IRAs, money markets, research, invest, talk to your parents, and start as early as possible, okay? I'm gonna go work out now, gosh darn it.
right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I try to make it as creative as possible to explain all the different streams of revenue that I have. Obviously, the financial experts are just gonna go crazy with overanalyzing everything. The point I was trying to get when I talk about IRAs and like, you know, small interest savings account as streams of revenue is just that you wanna have your hands in as many things as possible because they all add up. It's like cashback credit cards. A lot of people don't take advantage of these. I didn't talk about them in this video, um, but I would highly recommend if you can handle your finances and you can pay back your credit card every single month, I think people are literally stupid for not having a cashback credit card. Uh, the main one that I use is a Capital One Quicksilver. I get a one and a half percent cashback on everything I buy. So if I spend $2,000 on a drone and whatnot, that's $30 I make back. $30 I got back for buying something I was already gonna buy. And as long as you can pay back in full, it's free, free money out there, guys, and those things add up. Your savings account, these cashback things, they all add up to, you know, maybe it's $10 here, $2 here, $50 there, it adds up and it potentially can be in the thousands the more and more you start to spend. And with my business account, I actually have a 2% cashback card. Obviously that has a $95 annual fee, but the extra half a percent that I'm earning because I'm spending so much money with Everford on postage and whatnot, I'm making way more back than I would pay in the $100 fee. So credit cards are another thing. Like you should just always have your hands at as many money making things as possible while not going outside your ethics and you know the law and whatnot. Um, another two things I didn't really talk about in this video would be things that are newer to me. Uh, I am involved in some real commercial real estate deals in Texas, so I actually can say that I'm a landowner in Texas, so I have a large chunk of money that will be a long-term investment that I'm gonna keep reinvesting and have. I wanna have multiple uh, plots of land with my business partners, so I'm very excited about that. And then a new company that I'm starting with some business partners that is outside of fitness, that is in its baby stages, and I'm just so excited about it. So have your hand in as many things as possible. Capitalize on things when you can, like social media. I'm in social media now. I'm gonna capitalize on working with companies, taking sponsorship deals, as long as it doesn't take away from my morals because this social media thing, you know, it may be here for two years, maybe here for 10 years. It may be here, you know, I, I might, you guys might not like me after tomorrow, right? Um, but just maximize everything when you're at, um, at a point where you can. So, oh, this helped uh, give you understanding about my thoughts about money. I, I consider myself someone always good with money. I know everyone in my comment section thinks I'm gonna go broke and I'm an idiot. And I, I do things in a funny and wacky way, but I consider myself, I've always been good with money. Back when I was in college, high school, I never, I never was someone who didn't have money. I always found a way to make money and I always found a way to keep my money, right? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope also that everyone involved in the hurricane is okay. Um, you know, make sure you're safe, evacuate, whatever you need to do. I know this thing is going to like wreck the Carolinas. So uh, my heart goes out to everyone that has family there, or knows someone, or maybe you live there. So stay safe, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video, dude. Peace.